We just we just got two slides, so okay. we should try. Uh, yeah, we should. Just stop and down. Hi all, thank you again for coming. Um, so um, my name is Bianca. Uh, I'm not necessarily a convener of YCIG, but I, I am a member here. Ephraim is a MAG member as well as Wanawit uh, right here. So thank you so much for coming. Um, so um, I know there's some new face and more familiar faces here. There are probably faces who know why I you much better than I do. Uh, but I'll just, uh, because of the newcomers, I'll just kind of give you a background on why CIG, what it is, um, and you know how you can participate. Um, and then our agenda, um, as I sent out to the mailing list, um, would be um, starting with the you know background and then the introduction of everyone at the table. Uh, again, um, we love new faces here. It's super important that everyone knows who you are. And then we will go to the appointment of the interim committee. Um, there's a few criteria, which I will go through a bit later, and then decide the roles and responsibility of the interim committee. Again, um, we respect the mailing list, and that's really where our uh, conversation is. Um, so we will um, suggest names for the mailing list and then for the mailing list to approve. So, okay, starting with the uh, background of YCIG. So um, we have been very active on involving youth, and a lot of here are uh, people here who are really active on the mailing list. We have a mailing list that's on Google that is open to everyone, uh, but par uh, particularly youth, uh, how we define it, is under 30 years old. Um, so in the past, what we have done, um, we have pulled off quite a lot of things uh, throughout the gr as a group. Uh, for example, we have organized a workshop, um, there's also the fact that we, uh, you know, put together uh, reports. But I think in the last year, um, we, um, in terms of, you know, coordination, uh, we, we didn't have, have a very clear uh, person or role uh, for people to kind of take on uh, for the YCIG to kind of move forward. Um, we were discussing the charter last year, which, uh, you know, had some um, issues uh, on kind of proceeding. So that's why we think this year it's a good idea to start with uh, appointing the interim uh, committee um, here and then approving uh, in the mailing list and having people in the mailing list um, agree or disagree. Um, to kind of get that started, and then we can, you know, um, start with uh, fini uh, we can then finish the charter review. So before I go on, I'll pass it to Ephraim. Do you want to add anything on the YCIG? Um, yeah, uh, nothing much to add. Just to say that uh, welcome all of you here, and we want more people. We want more involvement. Just to insist on that, uh, no one is. Uh, the overall leader, we need all of you to take initiative. No one is being paid to do this. It's just volunteer work. So need every one of you to take initiative and to make sure your voice is heard to the highest corridors uh, possible. Thank you. Um, okay, well, like, uh, does anyone have any questions before I proceed? We'll just discuss. Um, so let's start with um, maybe Ephraim, start with introducing yourself. Um, and then, and then we we'll pass on the mic. Um, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, my name is Ephraim. Um, I'm from Kenya. Um, my training is legal, uh, so my background is um, law. 
um, I work on the researching issues with um, law, tech, human rights, um, and um, I'm passionate about young people. That's why we've really been pushing that young people's voices are heard to the highest level possible. And we just want to thank um, you people for uh, trusting us and uh, being um, part of uh, the community and being very active and keeping us in check, reminding us that uh, we need our voices heard at the highest level. And it's an honor to serve um, as the youngest uh, MAG member in uh, history. I got appointed when I was 22. My term is almost over. Um, uh, it's a three-year term, and um, very soon we need more young people. We don't want this to be a one-off, so we need next time to have a 12-year-old, a 13-year-old in the mag. I can't wait for that day to happen. Thank you. My name. My name is Vanessa. I come from Hong Kong, HKYIGF. This is my first time to come to this IGF. Sorry. Um, I'm Jenny. I'm also from Hong Kong, and we're youth representatives from the HKYIGF, and this is my first time here as well. Hi, my name is Esther. I'm from Brazil. It, this is my second IGF. <coughs> Hi, my name is Pedro. I'm also from Brazil. This is my second IGF. Hi, I'm Odélio from Brazil, and this is my first IGF. Hi, everyone. My name is Renata Bauta. I'm also from Brazil, and this is my second IGF, and I'm a member of the Youth Observatory. Good morning, I'm Kimberly Anastasio. I'm also from Brazil, and this is my second IGF. Good morning, I'm David from Germany, uh, 21 years old, um, second IGF, and I'm organizing the German Youth IGF. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chong Wan from the Vietnam. Welcome, IGF. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kung I'm from Vietnam. This is my first time in IGF. Thanks. Good morning. My name is Effie. I'm from Israel, and this is my first IGF. Uh, hi, Krishna from India, uh, and I'm doing my Master of Public Policy in Berlin. This is my second IGF. Hi, I'm Florian from Austria and the European Youth IGF project. Um, I'm here the second time, and I'm a student in Austria. Mm, Martin from Germany, also European Youth IGF, and uh, second time. Hi, I'm Natalie Cho from Hong Kong, and this is my first time to go to IGF. I'm Elfen from Hong Kong, and I'm 30, 13 years old now, and I'm from Hong Kong. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jimmy. I'm come from Hong Kong. It's my first time to IGF. Okay. Thank you. My name is Abdijiril Basharbong. I come from Chad. It's my first IGF, and also I am the national coordinator of IGF Chad and ambassador of US also. Morning, everyone. This is Fred from Hong Kong. I, I'm a teacher, but today is a little bit different because I'm a babysitter of my lovely students. Good morning, and I'm Oliver from America, and of course, this is my first time in IGF, and I am a student from Poland Code Lemon Chan English Primary School. Hi, I'm Ocean, I'm from the United States, and this is my first IGF. Hello, I'm Keen, I'm 12 years old, I come from Italy, and this is my first IGF. Hello, my name is Josiah, this is spelled J-O-S-I-A-H, and I'm from Hong Kong, and this is my first time here. Yes, good morning, everybody. Feel like <laughs> <laughs> above the eight limits. And then my name is Vanavit from Government of Thailand. So I'm too old in this in internet. Already 26 years since some, a lot of you are not born yet. So I first, I still keep my first email that 26 years ago. So I like to see how the new generation is carry on the internet. Hello, my name is Anya. I'm from Russia. It's my third IGF. 
Good morning. My name is Michael. I'm, uh, this is my second IGF, and I'm currently based in Serbia. Hi, this is Yanis Lee uh, from Hong Kong as well, and uh, with the uh, Asia Pacific Regional IGF, and uh, I haven't counted how many IGF I've been to, I guess, four or five. Hi, everyone. This is David. Um, I'm also from Hong Kong, but also the coordinators of HK YIGF and also the YIGF in Asia region. Uh, I think this should be the fourth IGF for me. So, welcome everyone to join the IGF. Okay, great. Um, yeah, here we go, everyone. Oh, okay. Uh, can we have the remote uh, speak? Oh, say, say now. Yeah. Uh, Sina Mohammed. Okay. Audio. 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 Feel free. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Yes, we can hear you. Uh, uh, hi, I am Zara Mohammed from Sudan. This is my first IGF. I am a PhD candidate. Uh, and Pardon me? Thank you. Okay. Sure, if you want to. Hi, I'm Larry Maggid, and I'm the CEO of ConnectSafely.org. We're a nonprofit internet safety, privacy, and security uh, organization. We work a lot with young people, and we're the United States host of Safer Internet Day. I'm Patty Regeer, uh, Sonia Livingstone from the London School of Economics. Uh, I do research with um, young people. Okay, great. Now that we've gone through the room once, it's nice to see who's here. And you know, sometimes it's like you email so much on the list and finally you see a person's name, uh, a person's face, which is fantastic. Um, so we will start. Um, we will start, um, yesterday we, uh, a smaller group of us discussed the agenda and I wanted to see if anyone has any uh, questions on the agenda. So the agenda today will start with um, appointment of an interim committee um, and that we have a few criteria. Um, number one is they have to be under 30 years old. Um, now we're aiming at five people representing each a different region. So, um, you know, that's kind of like where we, a basis that we'll start off with. Um, and again, you know, we will use the mailing list as an approval. Um, and then the second item would be deciding the roles and responsibility of the interim committee. So does anyone have any comments on the agenda? Yeah, please, Martin. Um, just just for the order, I think it, it, ma it makes uh, sense to discuss the responsibilities of the committee before we elect people, so they know what they are running for. Good point. Let's switch it up. <laughs> it's quite easy over here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, starting with the roles and responsibility, yesterday we had some ideas. So um, maybe um, around the table, I just wanted people to kind of. Uh, Whoa. Have some, have some uh, suggestions towards what do you think an interim committee would do. So uh, what happened last year essentially is um, our charter does not have any um, statute for uh, for having um, I wouldn't say like a, a leader you know per se uh, for YCIG, which um, which is much needed. And I think the reason why it's needed is there's a lot of reporting that needs to be done. Um, we wanted to also participate with other uh, dynamic coalitions, which is super important. Um, and uh, so, you know, I think that that's a you know, basis of where we wanted to start with the interim committee. So for myself, I think um, them, it's super important to finish the charter review. Um, so I just wanted to open up the floor for anyone who wanted to comment on what is needed uh, for the responsibilities um, for the interim committee. Uh, hi, Michael here. Uh, so um, we definitely need um, 
contact people. We need points of uh, of leadership. So I think that probably the YCIG is what it suffered from the most is not actually a lack of commitment or a lack of involvement. It's from a lack of knowing who is going to be kind of the uh, the final word of accountability, um, I, I guess, as you could say, the, the final authority on certain things. So for instance, uh, the past few months, I, I, I've been very, uh, I've been very impressed with how we could well, at least come together and get get some things uh, done. However, had there been a little bit more um, encouragement and um, coordination, we could have even done more. Like yesterday, there was the DC session, and unfortunately, YCIG. Although we had submitted our report, we weren't, for instance, we weren't um, represented at the DC session. So, uh, you know, for instance, I, if any of you are involved on the list, my name is, you know, I, I'm. I try to be as involved as I can, especially with like editing documents and whatnot. And for instance, there's a lot of points that you know where people had invested the time in um, in actually you know having a discussion of even if it's something micro about the wording that we're using. That's that's important because this is these are official you know statutes that we should be uh, abiding by. And so with that said, you know there, it was kind of like I often would look turn to Bianca as the MAG member to be like, well, since you're the MAG member. Of you know of the YC and and you as well, um, uh, Ephraim. You know, should we, are are you the authority on this? Is it David because he was the one that started the document, etc. So having having that set in stone would be very helpful. But then aside from that, then being proactive. So it's not just about just being that authority. It's also being proactive to understanding how are we going to continue to be involved throughout the IGF and the wider internet governance ecosystem. How can we get more youth involved? Not just youth that are in college or or, or, um, or in uh, you know young professionals, but also youth that are in um, in you know elementary, or maybe not elementary, but you know secondary uh, or high school, etc. So. Um, I, I, that's probably the hardest part because that takes time, work, and creativity. Thank you. Um, just um, as we go on, I wanted to recognize the presence of Rafik uh, Damak. He's uh, one of the founders of YCAG so many years ago. You can just greet us and say hi or something. Can you pass him the mic? Thanks. Um, yes. So what do you want to say? Okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, happy to see that uh, kind of rejuvenation of the youth coalition, and um, just I mean I hope that you are not going in the same discussion we have uh, for many years, like regarding uh, what uh, means um, what what means to, to be youth or uh, if youth is a stakeholder and so on and to focus really more on the, uh, on the issues. And um, so I'm just here like really to, to see what you are doing, guys. Uh, I'm happy that things are moving on. Um, just want maybe to respond to Mike about, uh, I mean, I understand you were talking about the charter. Um, the chart is just to, to give you kind of uh, guidance or uh, clarification about your mission, but you should not really spend much more time on that. Uh, my understanding, there was some maybe in the beginning some kind of confusion about the process. So if you just settle out that quickly and then move on. Uh, another comment, just uh, maybe the, my last one. Um, please don't focus just on IGF. In the beginning, when we started the Youth Coalition, one point we had is about intersessional work and also looking uh, about other space where uh, internet governance issues are discussed. So that please have that in mind and see how you can use uh, the coalition as a space for that uh, to coordinate and to create synergies between all members. And um, also think about uh, outreaching to other stakeholders. I think that one of uh, the limitation is it's hard to find young people in the private sector and um, the government, but there is always possibility to have uh, those sympathetic, sympathetic, I cannot find the right word, from those stakeholders that they can help and join you. Okay, that's it. Okay, so that, that was really good, you know, guidance that we had. Um, but I'm, you know, going back to the discussion of like the roles and responsibility of the interim committee. 
and uh, of which uh, Michael mentioned the point of contact, um, and then also, you know, how can we get youth more involved in this space? Um, and I think, you know, uh, getting more involved, that might mean intersessional work. Is there anyone who wants to comment? Okay, so I can totally agree with uh, Michael and also Rafik, but um, so as we discussed also yesterday, I think it's really important to, to do the charter review as, as, as swiftly as possible um, and majorly done by the interim committee um, so that the rest of the members can also focus on the intersessional work and um, producing official statements and documents so the YCG is keeping up the contact to other stakeholders. So I really think um, revising the charter should be the main focus and then we can probably be very quickly with a new elected steering committee and yeah, keep on working. Any other comments? In this, David, for record. Um, as we are also discussing in the group, I mean, admiring this, uh, about uh, the steering committee uh, things, I do think uh, they got an another important point that the steering committee or even the steering, in, uh, steering, uh, steering committee should just uh, doing the administration work, but not doing the decision making work. Um, that is doing some coordination, just referring to what uh, Michael has just mentioned about uh, being the contact point of the person who contact with uh, the IGF secretaries for at least uh, make sure we got the session every year and and <laughs> yeah and also what is that night for submitting the papers uh, and also sharing some information from uh, the secretaries mailing list so I do think this is some of the area of focus for the, the working group uh, not the working but the, the steering committee thank you yep those are great points yeah go, please go ahead um, I would also greatly appreciate if we do not just focus on the official communication that is put towards us, but also try to uh, ha bring together more the initiatives inside the YCIG and uh, try to focus on sessions also for next year that we can, like we did a couple of years back, uh, uh, try to hand in sessions together and also look for uh, cooperations with the other dynamic coalitions and um, the other actors that deal with young people like ISOC, like ICANN, and try to uh, uh, through that, like Rafik said, also try to involve young people from other stakeholders that are not necessarily coming out uh, outside of civil society. And another point on communication, I also hope that uh, we can uh, uh, relay uh, the official information also that they are certainly reached in all the different regions and that um, through these uh, representatives of the regions, we also have more direct access points that uh, all the regions stay involved and uh, are up to date of what's happening. So I hope that this will be a more direct and uh, personal uh, contact point there. Thanks. That's a good point. I felt like uh, before we had uh, organized a session with like other members of the YCIG, so that was very useful because uh, that enhanced a lot of cooperation. We understood what each other was uh, looking at. So um, to Martin's point, I added um, like focus on kind of like uh, the inter um, communication as well as the uh, external. Uh, communication uh, with the dynamic coalition and uh, hopefully enhance uh, our cooperation and be able to host sessions or um, and also attracting people who are outside the co civil society. To that point, I wanted to know, is there anyone who is not in a civil society cap here? Okay, so, <laughs> so that was uh, quite, <laughs> quite true. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, is there anyone else who wants to make a comment? Yeah, go just quickly to, to comment on that on that point. I mean, I do want to just for the record make it make it clear that um, civil society is often the I think is the the most represented here simply because especially most youth members aren't in the capacity usually to be in other stakeholder groups. I mean, that's I mean, especially if they're younger, they wouldn't be in the government, they wouldn't be in the private sector necessarily. You know, or at least it would be much more difficult. So I, I think that is that is more um, that is a reality that we need to uh, to be aware of. But that's not to say that there could not be, especially young professionals from those other stakeholder groups that would be willing that could be willing to get more involved. Um, just to com comment on that, in our project we also have a young ac academic and two entrepreneurs that certainly belong to the other sectors. 
but that have other meetings right now going on. That's why there's less overlap. And I think we also need to sort of create the, the dynamic coalition in a way that it is appealing to other stakeholders. So once we are finished with all this whole charter stuff, maybe people will also be interested in discussing youth issues that are cross-sectorial. Um, to that point, there was an interesting discussion that I had, is that, um, I mean, youth is so early in our career, sometimes, like, we might want to, like, I think Florian made that point that he might want to, you know, join a different sector in the, uh, in the future, and I think that is uh, very much true um, to, you know, how, mo like, moldable that we are, like, because we're quite early in our stages of career and academic, um, so that, that's an... Uh, great thing. So one, just one thing that I need to advertise is that we have um, a Google Doc uh, that's available right now. So it's igf.asia slash ycig igf. I'll repeat it again, igf.asia slash ycig igf. So um, yeah, so this is uh, kind of like where I've been typing notes and uh, adding, you know, what are the ideas that we have so far so everyone has a, a point of reference. Um, so is there anyone who has any thoughts on um, roles and response? I mean, the people who has been commenting has been quite active on the list, so I wanted to kind of open up for people who are lesser, um, you know, aware of what YCIG uh, is doing, but also, you know, maybe you have an expectation of uh, what you expect from the group. Is there anyone who's outside, uh, you know, outside the usual active participants to, um, to comment? Okay, so no. <laughs> um, okay, good. Um, so any other points uh, with regards to, so the, uh, what we have so far is the um, administrative role, so it's a non-decision making role. The second is acting as a center point of communication and um, uh, not only as the official IGF contact but also access um, point for others, um, other sectors. Um, and one thing I wanted to mention is uh, setting out a timeline uh, for doing this uh, all work because I, I understand everyone has a different schedule and what we've seen in the past is YCIG lists tend to be very active during the IGF and they kind of dies down. And last year we were really like kind of optimistic uh, around, oh, we will have this uh, ongoing um, uh, engagement. And I felt like people did engage when there's like a policy address. So we put together this WSIS plus 10 document super quickly. Uh, which was amazing because we had a stance um, uh, that we issued as a group. Uh, but then when it comes to things that are not as, uh, it's important but not urgent, <laughs> then people would be like, oh, like, uh, you know, let's just delay it. Um, so I think setting up a timeline uh, is important for this interim committee because they would need to commit to that timeline and help us to push things through. Um, and then number four is to finish a charter review. Um, and then number five would be coordinating uh, sessions for next year, so uh, potentially with other stakeholders, uh, with a, dy a dynamic coalition bigger group, <clears throat> um, as well as the um, uh, organizing a session among ourselves, that's also a possibility. And then number six is the outreach part, where uh, hopefully we can uh, get more youth involved in the policy space and doing more intersessional work. So for what I've outlined so far, um, any comments? Yeah, go ahead. Um, especially for the uh, finished uh, chapter review uh, session, um, I do want to add in some information on what we have done last year. For the last year meetings, we, uh, for the meetings on YCIG, already set up a working group on, on working on those uh, reviewing chapters uh, things. So. There is some outcome documents, not outcome documents, but some some documents uh, taking notes about uh, the community concerns on different issues. For example, like uh, the formation of uh, the group and also the election, how we can run the election. This kind of suggestion was already worked by uh, uh, the working group. So I do think we can, uh, for the interim steering committee, they can refer to these documents to start their work uh, because these work is also um, taking uh, the fields from the communities from last year. So we need not to start from zero uh, to, 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 to one, but we can already start from like 0 0.5. Thank you.
Okay, so any more comments? Okay, so if not, then then I think that um, we will again share this with the uh, mailing list. Um, and but then now we at least have some concrete ideas as to what we expect of the interim committee. Yeah, go ahead. Actually, um, I just thought of something, and uh, one thing that I, I forgot to mention was that I was I was whenever we were putting together the report for the, for the secretariat, I was really impressed with how many youth uh, events were actually happening. I mean, it ended up being like five pages long, and there was something from literally all over the world. So that actually makes me think that maybe, um, that like like you were saying that 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 you know involvement is there. We need to figure out how to to, to translate that both offline onto online, you know, through the, through the list, and then also um, how to maybe collaborate more within those initiatives that, like David, you were saying, we already kind of have, we already have to go from. So um, I think that should also be a, a, a key point in terms of outreach for the, uh, for the committee. That's very much true. I felt like there's like a YIGF that happens in one region, like every every you know uh, month, um, and and sometimes we're just not aware of those regions. And it's great that because our group, uh, like our mailing list, is really uh, big, and we have a lot of members, and people would like forward our emails out, uh, so you know people get their initiatives on. Um, and another thing that I think uh, would be to, uh, I mean, like Michael did a great work together with everyone to lead the website. Um, uh, updates. So I think that is also quite important because that is kind of essentially our face outwards. Um, so uh, I would say the website is quite important in terms of outreach. Uh, is there anyone who else want to comment? <laughs> okay, so um, so great. So we, we've added that point on the outreach part where it's like other youth initiatives. Um, so we will move towards the uh, interim committee appointment. So um, not right here, but at least we will have um, you know a loose structure right now. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is we uh, decided um, we think that it shouldn't be role bound binded, uh, especially because we don't really know who these people are and what their skills are and. Um, it would create more complexion when we say, oh, this person's running for chair, that person's vice chair, when in fact that they probably do exactly the same thing. So uh, we're going to have a flat structure um, in, in that sense. Uh, we, we thought about that um, yesterday. So I wanted to open up the floor to anyone who wants to comment on the flat structure for the interim committee. So again, for the steering committee, it would be decided by the charter review. Uh, but for the interim, we have decided that <clears throat> we think that it would be, uh, we recommend that it, it would be better if it's flat. So I wanted to see if there's anyone who have any thoughts on that. Do you think there has to be a necessary lead leader? Yeah, go ahead, please. So basically, I can just repeat what Bianca just said. Um, it's really the goal to, to keep it as simple as complex, and um, um, deciding on a, on a chair and vice chair for an interim committee is like, it's unnecessary work that, that distracts us from doing other stuff. Um, and the other goal is to do it swiftly as possible so we don't need a chair and a vice chair. Um, Michael here. I can also say that, for instance, uh, I do a lot of work with the Southeastern European Dialogue and Internet Governance. And for instance, they work incredibly efficiently. They work very closely together. And they have that kind of open executive committee structure where there's no set leader, per se. They, each of them kind of uh, takes uh, what they are good at or you know, they, they work well together, kind of as more of like a council. So I definitely agree with Florian there. Yeah, I just wanted to add my voice and say um, I agree to this kind of structure. It's good um, uh, given people are busy. As I mentioned before, uh, this is not a paid role, so it will depend on how free someone is to work on a particular task at a specific time. And then just to urge um, everyone to feel involved. Don't feel intimidated by your age, by your gender. I, we would want more diversity for these roles. Thank you. Great. So, um, anyone who wants to comment on a flat structure? No. 
Okay, so um, okay, so we, we have that, and the criteria um, right now is under 30 years old. So <laughs> there is this uh, you know hard uh, limit, and then there's also um, we we're thinking of five people representing one for each region. Um, so you know, with regards, I mean, 30 years is something that we've already agreed on the um, on the earlier charter review when we collected a lot of comments. I wanted to see what people think about uh, people representing different regions. Is there other type of um, diversity measures that we want to put in for this steering interim steering committee? Uh. <clears throat> Uh, can you also mention the five regions specifically? Yeah. I'm not very good at geography. <laughs> so I think there's Asia, America, and then Africa, Europe, Australia. Is Aust like is Australia like I mean, Asia, Asia, Asia Pacific should include. That's a good point. Like, what yeah. what should we? So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Martin put up his hand. Please go ahead. I uh, didn't find it, but uh, as far as I know, it's uh, Western Europe and uh, uh, USA. It's uh, uh, Eastern Europe, MENA. It's uh, Asia Pacific. It's Africa and South America. I don't know what happens to Australia. <laughs> so it's Asia Pacific. Thanks. Okay, so I'll repeat that. That's North America, and then M E MENA, like, right, is it MENA, M-E-N-A? Yes. And then Africa, Asia Pacific, and South America. Again, I think it was um, the United, it was basically North, like North America and Western Europe, Eastern Europe in the Middle, in the Middle East, and North Africa, or, and then, or I'm sorry, Middle East, and then North Africa, Asia Pacific, and South America. So it's fine. Okay, looking at the UN uh, regional groups for as of May 2014, uh, these are the groups Africa Group, 54 member states, Asia Pacific Group, 53 member states, Eastern European Groups with 23 member states, Latin America and Caribbean Groups with 33 member states, and the West European and Others Group with 28 member states. So that's how the UN classified them uh, in May 2014. Even better, so I don't need to test out my geography skills. <laughs> um, so is that clear now? Yeah. Okay, okay, good, good. Um, that's a great, uh, great clarification. Um, yes, okay, so is there any um, other criteria that we want to say the interim committee would have like any diversity measures or we're good with this like people representing different regions uh, one thing i wanted to ask is you know what if in the uh, likelihood event that we hope that more people are going to run for this interim committee what if it happens to be um two people or three people who are running for the same region should we go through an election should we go should they just talk it out no what do you think So we also talked about it yesterday and probably a rather unconventional solution or suggestion would be to you know, talk it out. Um, yeah, because it, it simplifies the process. Uh, I mean, if, if there is real, a real issue that two people of the same region uh, when they run for interim, uh, we would have to do an election, um, which probably takes time and, and some logistics to, to set up a proper election system on the mailing list. Um, so just... Just please, so for all the regions, try to, to talk it out beforehand, maybe, uh, before running for it. Uh, if that's not possible, then, yeah, we have to do election, but um, maybe we can do it without it. Are there people who are for the election? Okay. 
Um, so I'll take that as a tacit agreement <laughs> for now. Um, and let's move. Um, so again, I think an objective that we should bear in mind is, you know, this is such a small part of the progress and we really want to actually do actual work on policy as a group uh, and youth. So what we really want to do is to spend most of our time on the policy addressing, um, you know, engaging with other stakeholders. Uh, you know, that part is our core instead of, you know, kind of dragging on on this charter and, and what. So I think that is great that we have this uh, consensus towards um, the different regions as well as a flat structure uh, and you know talk it out among, <laughs> among different um, uh, the same uh, people who are running for the same regions okay so yeah, yeah please uh, <clears throat> this is Yana speaking well so uh, so we have a criteria that we need five people to represent each region just want to raise a concern that what if we don't have I mean, one of the regions is missing uh, people to run the positions, then what will we do? I mean, understanding that we want to push, it, push this interim as soon as possible so that we can start working, I mean. Uh, can we also put a time frame for talking it out? Because, no, I don't want it to stretch over and over. That's fair. Is there a suggestion on the time frame for talking it out? So we don't even know yet if there is need for talking out. Uh, maybe they have been talking out already for the people who know what it's uh, going to be about. So maybe you can just see and collect the list of, of, of willing people. And if we face the issue of multiple people from one region, we can give them 48 hours to talk it out. <laughs> Okay, so I'm, I'm just, one, in terms of process, I'm, I'm, something I'm getting a little concerned about is that uh, if we have a lot of tacit agreements, like, it might not necessarily be very, um, not, I mean, it might be considered very transparent or accountable. So I think we either need to think out this, but if we think out this process, we would still need to get, I'm assuming we'd still need to get it approved by the list. So that's something to take into account. The other thing is, um, is I'm going blank now, I'm tired. Um, I, uh, well, okay, I don't, I don't. Okay, so, um, but I think the timeline should be more important on like, when do we get an interim committee up and running? Um, so I suggest one month from now. Uh, so that, you know, we kind of go back, we have enough time to recoup, we have enough time to kind of discuss, and then uh, we have enough time to get approval from the list. Uh, what do you guys think of the one month from now to set up the interim committee? Okay, good. Um, okay, so great. Um, so, um, so, so, uh, you know, like, I'm just gonna you know, briefly wrap up on like this appointment of interim committee. We have, have cre a few criteria, um, under 30 years old, five people representing different region, which is African group, Asia Pacific, Eastern European, Latin American and Caribbean, Western Europe and other groups. Um, and, uh, and then we were sending out names uh, for the list to approve. We agreed to a flat structure. Uh, we hope people can kind of reach a consensus uh, if there are more people running for one region. Um, and the timeline is one month from now. Is there anything that I missed that we discussed that is important? Okay. Um, so, so we have like 40 minutes left, which is great. Uh, we, we get that efficiency, which I love it. Um, so we can either say, um, there's a few things. So, um, you know, uh, Ephraim, myself, uh, one of it are on the mag. So if there's anything that we can improve uh, next year in the IGF for youth involvement, um, we can definitely, you know, take notes. So I think that's something that's interesting for me. Or we can um, say, um, start with people who wants to uh, elect themselves, uh, nominate themselves for this interim committee. We can also discuss that. Um, or we can say, you know, uh, talk about different youth initiatives and see how we can collaborate among ourselves. So I just wanted to open that up. One, one item of the agenda that I would also be interested in seeing if anybody is in, would like to explore is especially since we have um, 
you know, very young youth members here, maybe to kind of brainstorm with them ways that we could maybe, um, you know, solicit their, their involvement more. I mean, the, I feel like that's a, a, a group of the sub stakeholders, like a subgroup of the stakeholders that we don't really hear from that very often. And I, I think it'd be a good opportunity to, to capitalize on that. Oh yeah, sorry. So before I move on, I realized that we did miss Yana's question. What if we missed a region? That was not addressed. <laughs> <clears throat> this is Yan speaking. Uh, well, I, I, from my perspective, I think uh, if we really just missing one uh, person from uh, that from specific region, I think we should just let the other. If there is any candidates that would like to run for it, to go for it, because I don't think we should let uh, these criteria to like uh, delay our timeline to move on. Since this is just interim, that's my perspective. So I mean, if we only have volunteers from four region, and then but there is more, uh, there is one, more than one uh, person interested to join the interim committee, then we can just let that person to join. What are the other things about um, this? If we did not have somebody who's running for one region, what should we do? The problem with Yanis' um, um, proposal is that um, so if I don't know, there's four people and there is one slot left. Um, who are we deciding who, who, is, who is getting the slot? Um, we would probably have to do an election or something similar. Or again, a talking out, but then it would be from all the regions. Um, that's a little issue. And it's also an issue to like keep it at four people because of deciding something. Um, an uneven number would always be better, but yeah. I'm, I don't, ha I don't have another su suggestion to, just to raise the awareness for this problem. Um, what I said earlier also about the communication back to the region, is, uh, for, for me it would be quite important and we've seen that we have uh, youth initiatives in all the regions. So I would hope that there's a, a, at least one person from each region that would run and try to support that region as good as possible. Um, but yeah, I would certainly pledge that we, uh, um, that we should have five people on the board in case of split votes um, and uh, uh, create an open process. In the end, we still want to forward it to the list and people on the list can also speak up and then there still might be somebody from that region. So yeah, if we don't find people here, we could also forward it to the list and see if we find someone there. And in the last uh, case, we can still uh, uh, have an open vote, uh, even though that would be a procedure, uh, procedure that we still have to figure out. Um, I just have a short look to agree the terms that if we got five regions, it should be a very ideal case. If we just got four uh, region representative, it should be fine because it's just steering committee. Uh, we just like one for one years. So I think uh, do not need to put too much limitation on on the whole work. Uh, this is what. The criteria is, of course, for our uh, reach list at least. I mean, for the five people reaching, uh, representing different groups is just a reach list, but not a mass, in a sense. Seems that is somehow of concern of the group, I, I, I do think. OK, so um, we will. Um uh, agree with that um, that way of kind of proceeding with the uh, five people um, and and then you know we will again getting more we will get more um, uh, input from the from the people who are on the list um, since you know this is probably a very small majority um, among the list uh, so we will again need to go through that anyways mm. okay please um, and any on a suggestion to uh, make the things run in a faster way, um, I would like to suggest maybe we can firstly list out the name uh, from this room that we would like to be in the representative for the steering committee from the region, that we can just share it out in, in uh, the mailing list to like 
recruiting the other person who had feeling interest to, to join uh, a steering committee in our sense, but first getting some name list from the group, uh, I mean, in the room at least first, uh, there's some of my suggestion to see how we think about this. That's good. I think if people are, who are interested, they should already kind of made up their mind by now. Um, and then, you know, we, we can, again, you know, go back to the list to approve. So maybe I should start with each group and then let people put up their hands or, or it'll be just like, yeah. Or will you feel intimidated <laughs> <laughs> if you need to put up your hands? Okay, so let's start with African group. So who wants to be an interim committee for African group? So we have zero interest. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, is there anyone who wants to run for Asia Pacific group? Oh, okay, great. Um, um, uh, great, 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 Samuel. Oh, nice, we already have one uh, to start with. Um, so Samuel, you, you came in late, but can you tell us about yourself? Did you come in late? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm Samuel from Hong Kong, and I'm representative for uh, Lambertian Ambassador Program. And uh, this is my first time to IGF, and I'm really interested in the internet issue, and also I want to promoting the internet governance for the world, or actually for uh, Asia Pacific first. Thank you. Great, don't we love volunteers? <laughs> okay, um, Eastern European group. Okay, great, great, great. We have another one, so Michael. Um, so he's been super active and he's been an amazing resource in um, the documents, he's like tidied up everything. So <laughs> fantastic, fantastic work. Um, Latin American and Caribbean group. Is there anyone from that region here? Latin American. Uh, as an interim committee. Uh, I'm Pedro from Brazil. I'm not uh, a candidate, but I would like to candidate. But I would like to highlight a problem that is we have three youth uh, sessions going on right now. People are scattered all around them. Uh, maybe there are Latin American youth who like to be here, but they have to be on others. So uh, I guess we may have a problem with that concerning the legitimacy of whoever we choose here. So um, I'd just like to raise that question to be discussed or considered. Yeah, actually, can I say something? I, you know, that actually is a really good point in terms of, um, you know, just because, just because we're here, I don't think we should have any kind of preferential, um, you know, selection over anyone else. So, I mean, I think ultimately, even though, yes, I'm happy to nominate myself and I'm, I would be very happy to be a part of this, um, I, I would definitely want... Uh, you know, a kind of approval from the list. I would want people, I, obviously people to be involved in this decision making. So um, I actually, um, you know, we, I, I actually motion that we just table this, to, or that we just um, move this to the, uh, into the list and we ask there, like, who would want to be involved? And of course we could go, we could go through this process and um, if, if we need to have an election with statements of interest, like for instance, that mo many other, um, uh, you know, internet governance uh, related groups do, I think we'll just, we should just do that because that's, that's, that's the most transparent, it's the most fair. Hmm. So um, I, I wanted to address it, Pedro, that's something that we need to address it in MAG because I think there are a lot of parallel sessions for a certain topic at, you know, like, and I think that's a matter of scheduling. Um, we nearly lost the YCIG slot, so I was super thankful that we had one. Um, so, um, you know, th there's that, you know, restriction uh, that we had, but again, you know, we will um, have everything uh, through the list. Um, so this is just, you know, somebody who's putting up their hands now, but of course, if we put out in the list and somebody say, oh, I wanted to run for it, that that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, so 
Well, we have one left, so I think we just like go through that and then we can move on to other agenda items. And the other thing is I also wanted to lay out a more concrete timeline than that one month. Uh, I felt like that was more fake. Go ahead, Martin. Um, just because uh, when we speak about transparency and moving stuff to the list, um, the people that are not in this room are probably also not necessarily on the list, especially as uh, many regions are here with first timers. So I would also encourage all the groups to motivate their young participants that they are here with to join the uh, dynamic coalition and uh, take part in the list. And then, of course, they can also promote themselves and put themselves forward for, uh, uh, for, the, uh, for, for the steering committee. That's a really good point. Um, that's also something we need outreach, and that's our primary uh, source of communication um, among all of us who are in different regions, different time zones, uh, different everything. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Nick Shuri from the UK government had something to raise. He's also a young person like us, by the way. So really grateful to have young people who are part of the government, part of the private sector, listen to us and still support us in our work. Thank you very much. I'm not sure that I uh, qualify as young anymore. You know. yeah. it's, it's terrible depression kicking in. Um, it's, it's just a, an observation. Um, I... Uh, I, I've been working to try and sort of um, increase the youth participation in the UK, and um, you know, without sort of um, uh, sort of telling you guys what to do, because I certainly want, want to do that. Just maybe some couple of ob observations around your sort of you know processes. Um, so I'm on the uh, government advisory committee at, uh, at ICANN, and one of it and I have been laughing because we've just had some uh, elections for our GAC leadership committee, and uh, they some of the same issues were cropping up, um, but. Uh, the, the government committee uh, on, uh, on our website, um, we have our, um, our sort of uh, our, um, operating principles and they set out the process for elections um, to, the, to the leadership committee and um, as you can imagine they're very extensive. Um, but it might be quite useful, I, I can't see the process listed on the YCIG website. Um, and I'm just thinking if there's um, uh, people in, in the UK that might want to sort of in, in, uh, participate, it would be helpful for them to know the process, you know, through which they can nominate themselves, even if they're not here at the moment. Um, I, I came in a bit late, so I apologise if you haven't sort of already discussed timelines, but um, in the GAP print operating principles, we have a clear set of timelines as well to have a sort of a, a window by which people can nominate themselves and then a window by which pe uh, sort of... Um, if it has to go to an election, uh, the other members of, of the, the committee or, or the group can sort of make their, uh, make their selection. So it might be just something, if you haven't already considered that, um, in terms of just in terms of process, which will support that idea of transparency, which is always so fundamentally important. Um, so, uh, so, uh, super, uh, so we don't really have the operating principles because we don't have the charter who has that information. So what we are trying to do is to set up the interim committee in order to set up, uh, do the charter review. Though I think your like, timeline point was super relevant. So we just kind of like earlier in this session, we were just like, oh, let's just do one month and people do, did agree. But I think setting up specific milestones by, um, you know, like maybe in two weeks, then we, we have the... Um, uh, everyone nominate themselves, and then in two more weeks, then we will appoint the uh, interim committee member. Um, yeah, uh, committee. So that that's uh, kind of. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll I'll share I'll share the um, uh, the link to the document. It might it may be helpful. It may not. Yeah, yeah. That that's uh, then we can also put that in part of the charter review um, as a reference document. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so uh, for the timeline, we did set out one month, but we were going to break it down as, as that was a really timely uh, comment. So, for example, nomination periods. Um, would we need one week, two weeks? How much time do we need for the nomination for each of the regions? Uh, this is Yana speaking. Well, I think maybe about two weeks shall be fine for your nomination period. Uh, and actually, after some thought, I'm wondering if one month would be a, would be a good timeline because uh, considering the holidays and December and January is probably like everyone might not be very attentive to emails. So, yeah. Yeah, please. 
So we already had the point with the timeline and one month was, was okay a couple of minutes ago. Um, for the issue with holidays, um, if, you don't, if you're not working in, IG, in an IG context and youth participation full time, it's even better to have holidays because you have more spare time to attend the emails, which is probably the bigger part of the mailing list. So that would also count as an advantage for me. Um, just yeah, I, I, I think I think I, I, I totally understand Yanis and, and, and I, I do sympathize, but at the same time, Nick, I think one of our biggest problems is that we kind of are in a, a situation where it's the chicken and the egg problem. Like we, we need to get a charter out, but we can't do that unless we have a leadership team, but we can't get the leadership team if we don't have a, a set process. So it, it, this is the whole point of why it's an interim committee. I mean, we can always, um, you know, once we have a charter set, we can then open it up for a non-interim committee, a, a actual appointed term and whatnot. So I think, uh, so it's not that this is supposed to be a charter uh, steering committee. I think this is, it, it, it works for now and that, uh, you know, the sooner that we can get working on this, the, the better because these processes around internet governance are happening and the last thing we need is to not have youth involved. So I think we need to really stay focused on what is our point here and what are we trying to accomplish overall. Okay, so I'm just gonna, um, is there anyone who's not on the table who wants to comment anyone on the timeline yeah. okay well totally understand Florian's comment so well if that's the case then if we have to reach the one month timeline and I guess why don't we just set one week for nomination period and everyone just nominate themselves if they want to join and then we use three weeks for consensus development so that they can talk it out if there is if there are more candidates in one region Yeah, I think one in three weeks work. One a one, please. Yes, uh, one a week for the record. So I have to running out quite soon, but I just want to lift the issues that because next year Thailand will host the youth IGF also as well. So I think after you have this kind of interims, so it would be great that we will know that what are the expectations from the other regions for participation? Is that you want to have the participation cross? Because otherwise you have to wait until the IGF uh, in the next meeting, 2017. So, so I, I will try my best to coordinate with the government so, or the host country that coming from government. Are there any support for the youth? Specifically, apart from the AP, uh, so that that the main purpose. I like to hear. Also, you can communicate intersectionally that what what you would like to have the support from the host country. So I will coordinate for sure with with uh, an admission team. That is for sure. But I just left the issue for for the other regions who who would be actively working in this that. I like to hear your views. What do you like to have the support? Do you like to have a meetings there or uh, meeting to to formalize this youth IGF? And then please feel free to communicate. So then I see what we can do there. What what month is it in July? Right about mid mid year. So hope to see you. So one of it, if we are interested, how do we get in touch with you? <laughs> with me first, I think. Mm -hmm. Then I, I coordinate. Mm -hmm. I still have to announce uh, the working committee. I think who will be, and then mm -hmm. okay. Because it's supported by the telecom telecommunications organization. So if the uh, if you're coming up with the idea first, mm -hmm. uh, first come first serve. Uh, <laughs> what, what the youth require, so then maybe it, it will be very interesting for to see the youths more visible, I just yeah. say, that, mm. that uh, thanks to the admission that been pushing this several mm. times, and you can see how important, we have three CAC members here from government, <laughs> and this is from Sweden, and UK, and Thailand, so the government do see the importance of the youths, and I think that, that communicate with us what you need, and then see what we can do to, to really make it visible. Thank you. Mm. So if someone is remote, um, let's uh,
Hi, Haley, you've got the uh, mic. I can read it out. Okay, so hi everyone, this is Haley, currently based in Japan. As there is a small group on site now only, it will be good to announce, summarize this meeting, and have the nomination and election in the mailing list. I agree um, that it is better to have a clear timeline process in the meeting now first. What is the detail in the uh, upcoming month? Um, then to get approval um, from the mailing list to form the um, push forward the coalition. Also, I have a, one suggestion. Currently, apart from the mailing list as a major communication, there's no centralized place to store our documents, which is available to everyone. That's a good point. Um, so, um, as there are a lot of online and offline initiative, initiative like the meeting now, um, sorry, uh, the business document, etc., it would be good to have an overall database and folder in the cloud to record all the documents or activities we've created, even the meeting minutes today. It would be good to leverage the online efforts into offline one to keep good track of the existing one and better planning in the future. Yeah, I think that was a really good uh, concrete uh, suggestion, and I think that's something the interim committee could uh, put together. Okay, great, great. Um, so, continuing with, so for the timeline, we hasn't we haven't uh, had any agreement so far. Are we okay with the one week uh, for nomination and three weeks for consensus development? Do we think that's sufficient? Yeah. Okay. Okay, great, great. Um, yeah, please. The especially for the consensus reach part, uh, of course we, we do agree by one month to making the consensus. But I do suggest maybe we can have a concrete, I mean, uh, an actual date to be set up that we can have a check on at least the deadline is on which day. So I think maybe we can set One month, 10th January, maybe. Yeah, I, I agree. That, that's uh, clearer. <laughs> um, good. Um, good. Okay, so um, are, we, are we set with the, um, with the interim committee, the timeline, and everything? Is there anything that we missed? Okay. Um, okay, so so this next, uh, you know, we have 15 minutes left right now. So again, there are fee, a few um, agenda items that we can discuss, um, and we can kind of come to an agreement to what to discuss. So there's like how to better involve younger people, like as Michael said, you know, young young younger people, like maybe like teens, um, on this uh, improvement of youth involvement in IGF in general this year, um, and then the collaboration that we can do among this group. So um, is there anything that we want to discuss uh, right now? Um, yep. um, I just think of some of the logistic work we need to do on the coordination. Maybe uh, with the group, we can have someone to be the volunteers, to be in the coordinators or, or the coordination group uh, for the one week. Uh, the one week appointment of the interim committee that at least they, they need to generate a list or send out the emails of these uh, meetings and also uh, checking the deadlines of what we should be done. Uh, so I do think maybe we should set up a working group or volunteer group so that one person, yeah, one person maybe. Is that you? <laughs> Okay, so what David just suggests is to have somebody to keep track of the timeline, essentially as a timekeeper. Um, so it would, it would really mean nothing. You know, it's not that they have an interim committee uh, position. Yeah, just to be clear. So I suggest David to do that because he has been doing an amazing job so far. Is there anyone else who, um, who wants to help in that process just to keep us on the track? Done. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just easy. And he has been kind of 
at having that role uh, in the, within the group for a bit. <laughs> um, so, um, so again, you know, next, uh, you know, the next 15 minutes, what, what do we want to talk about? How to engage younger participants? How to improve uh, youth uh, involvement in um, in IGF? Um, and then the collaboration among us. Is there any specific topics that would be interesting? Particularly, I want to engage people who have not spoken yet, uh, because I think that's important to get everyone speak. Um, so maybe we can pass the mic to uh, the young kids over there and say, see what they want to discuss. Um, or maybe a, a good way to start is maybe like, you know, I mean, you're young, but like you're never uh, unequal, like you're an equal participant. Like what have you uh, seen in the IGF that you liked and you don't like? Maybe that's a good, good way to start. Um, what I see in IGF is that there are many young people like us. And in my opinion, I think we should tell the people from outside, like the young people outside, that us are participating in IGF and let them know that even young people can participate in something that's big and a, something that's in, more intermediate. And we should let them know that even if we can do it, then the young people can do it also. That is a fantastic, um, and, and I think that has to do with the promotion of IGF to other stakeholder groups. Um, and um, and I find this an important forum where we are multi-stakeholder and everyone can speak because other UN conferences, they're you know, most of it you have to be a minister uh, to get in uh, to start with. So I think this is an equal participation forum. Um, anyone else who wants to comment? Um, I think one of the thing that can be improved is that uh, one of the things I noticed is there are only youth participation in youth forums. Like um, some of the older youth might be interested in other uh, issues. Like I'm interested in gender equality, and um, but in those forums there are less youth speaking up because there are a lot of adults and professionals in those forums. And I think if we want to involve more youth in policy making or in uh, other issues other than building capacity for youth, we can maybe encourage them to speak up in those forums. Um, another thing is to promote uh, youth coalition or youth participation in these forums. Education in school is, is very important, even though a lot of the times we think, oh, education, it takes a lot of time, and it might not have the effect we want. But um, sustaining youth participation really requires a promotion in schools, and we lack that in Hong Kong currently. So I think that's a good way to do it. So just quickly to that point, um, if you, for example, go to an ICON session, or there was one about the IANA post-transition ICON, um, that's just a really high skill cap. So if people start talking and they try to not use abbreviations, they use an average of 10 abbreviations per 10 words. So um, it's just really difficult to follow it, and especially young people, it takes time to get into the process. Um, so maybe there is a lack of, of a good way how to educate yourself as a young person um, for the for the more complex topics, um, and also maybe there is, you know, we have to empower young people to just speak up even though they don't understand everything, so to get them more get them more active. Just a little comments, but not mainly about youth. Is we always discuss some issues and. We discovered many problems, but without action plans or conclusions. The conclusion is not we find that we have these issues, it's what we can do afterwards. Because I think youth is not think as complex as adults does. So they can have more innovations and give out some point that can change the world, but not as adults. So we can have more discussions of what we can change the world, but not the issues we are happening mainly about youth. Thank you. 
That's a good point. Sometimes I go to sessions and very frustrated <laughs> because all I hear is problems, not not necessarily solutions. So I, I think that that's a, a really great point that was made. I think Pedro wants to make a comment. I'd like to agree with the last two speeches and uh, vote for encouraging people to participate even though they don't, don't consider themselves experts. And my advice is uh, the adults are not experts as well. They might know a bit, little bit more, but they can't know everything there is to know. So if you start by knowing what they don't know, you can already add a lot of help to the conversation. So don't ever feel um, j that just because you're a youth, you can't help in a way. Sometimes just by thinking differently, by being young, you can already help. And as I said, just start knowing what they don't know, because they don't know everything. And you're already pretty much ahead. So um, these are all great interventions, and I completely agree. Uh, w one idea that I just had was, and forgive me if this is somebody else's thought of it too, is one of the obviously the biggest barriers to participation for youth is that many youth are in school at, at this time. They obviously can't get off to come far away or to even participate remotely during the day because they obviously have schooling. So what I'm thinking is, I wonder if somehow we could work with a pilot group of student, uh, of teachers, for instance, especially those schools that are involved in this process, to maybe have a teacher um, pick a digital issue that is relevant to them or to their class, and then basically that teacher then, we, I don't know if it would be somehow we, set, this is a very elementary idea, but we set up some kind of a remote hub or we get, we get them participating online during a specific session that is relevant to that issue. So that let's say I teach a, you know, um, a, a 10th grade course, a class, you know, about, you know, one thing, we can have uh, the course, we can do a, a, a project about net neutrality, and then um, that teacher can, uh, you know, working with the schools and working with uh, different um, aspects of the IGF, we could maybe get them uh, involved in that discussion at the IGF, just so at least they could be participating in that way. Just an idea. Uh, so Martin, Martin would comment, but I love how, like, the end, uh, at the end of the table, you already see a, a school teacher who's nodding uh, his head. So I'll let him comment. Um, all right, totally agree. Uh, but one thing that I concern is um, all of you have such good ideas, but when you pass this idea to school, uh, as a teacher, we have to break it down as small pieces, like promotion. You just say promotion. Student may not have any ideas, but if I pr break it down, like uh, Josiah. If I want to promote about IGF, any ideas that you are going to do? Videos, articles, or anything? Yeah, uh, to promote this IGF, maybe we could do a, a lot of more ways than just a PowerPoint and a script. Maybe we could uh, uh, share it through a video. And for me, I think, um, uh, I'm, I'm not saying I'm very, very good at doing videos, but I mostly uh, make videos, and so I think they'll also make it more interactive and fun for the children at school because they'll they'll be they'll be bored like just with the PowerPoint, like uh, just staring at the PowerPoint and a guy sharing. And if we, I mean, their reaction if we show a video, everyone will go uh, like wowing, and then when we show a PowerPoint, they'll just clap and yeah. So yes, and or maybe animation then. After they have that idea, we are going to help them to script it out, or maybe as a teacher to uh, check about the censorship or anything, then uh, we can upload and share with each other. Good point. It's like a, uh, we have very broad like timelines, and uh, it's better to kind of break it down and make it more concrete. Um, so I see a few hands here. Martin, do you still want to comment? Um, I just wanted to... to uh, because, uh, I mean, while I like the comments, I uh, also hear a lot that uh, young people are not experts or uh, um, cannot do as complex as the grown-ups in these forums. And um, I, I'm a youth worker by trade, and I believe that young people do uh, can, and that young people are experts. I mean, he certainly might make better videos than I will, and I mean, that's already cool. And um, don't, don't undersell yourselves. Uh, also believe that you can speak up and that you have something to contribute because a lot of your experience are experiences that are 
simply missing in these forums. That's why it's important that young people are here. But I would like to make a distinction between uh, um, what we are talking here, what the role of the dynamic coalition is, and what we do in terms of youth participation. Because what we do here is sort of a meta discussion on how to get more young people involved. And I think if we want to involve young people, these young people should come with an idea what they want to accomplish. That if they want to talk on IANA transition, privacy, cybersecurity, whatever, uh, then they should be in these forums. And I don't mind if not all young people are here, as long as the people here uh, are still trying to create more spaces for young people in the youth IGF and to try to make sure that we create more possibilities also outside of this room at IGF and to get more young people in here. So I'm, I'm, I, I think the YCIG is an important tool, but it's not necessarily the tool where young people should discuss the issues, but really more of that meta debate. Yes, thank you. Uh, Nick Shorey from the UK. Um, I'm really pleased you've come on to this discussion point because uh, this is something that I've been um, sort of trying to work on in the UK in terms of increasing youth participation in our uh, UK Internet Governance Forum. Uh, and I've been working with sort of Florian over the last year as well on ideas. Um, so it's really uh, following on from the point. Um, I'd love to hear from yourselves uh, here how you... Um, what the best channels are to, to reach out to the young people. So um, I've been working with an organization called ChildNet, um, well, our, sort of our steering committee has, and, uh, and we managed to get them in a panel. But I mean, I remember when I was at school, I didn't really pay a great deal of attention um, to some of those um, after-school clubs. I went down the park and played football. Um, but it didn't mean that I, I wasn't interested in the thing. So I'd, but I'd really like to hear about the best channels. Um, uh, someone mentioned to me, uh, uh, mentioned at our youth IGF that um, uh, the, the youngsters these days, they, they don't even use Facebook anymore, they use Instagram. So I'd just really love to hear, like, what are the best channels to reach out to, um, uh, to sort of young people in, uh, in your regions? And I'll just note them down and then start to think about them. Uh, please. I think the young people only are the participant participant if they can have a way to make a decision or being a organizer to discuss or solve the internet problem we will have more interest to join the meeting and if we only education the children it is not a best way oh. please and um, and now in Hong Kong, it's only one per less than 1% people know IGF. And I hope when I come back to Hong Kong and I can share the information of and my experience of IGF to, uh, uh, to from social media to um, more and let more people know more about IGF. Okay, so we're closing off the forum very soon, but I love that energy that's going on around the room. Again, you know, you can talk to each other uh, offline. You don't need to talk open mic. Uh, so it might be less intimidating, but I I'm so glad to see so many people, different ages, different cultures, different uh, nationalities who kind of speak up today. Um, so I'll, um, I'll let one more uh, intervention before I'll close the... Okay, thank you. Oh, it's okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, I will do it quickly. Um, thank you. It's better this way. Okay, I'm Sabrina, and I come from France. And what I would I wanted to say it was um, in France. I don't have numbers to present you, but it's very difficult to make um, youth in France get involved in um, gov um, internet governance uh, issues. And what I heard here was ex uh, almost exactly what I uh, thought. It's, it's very hard to go to those youth and to m make them um, take a part of, of IGF and of, uh, to make them realize how it's important for them because Yes, I used to think also this way, like it was not important, and it was di uh, difficult for me with all the um, 
all matters to me wasn't um, around in sorry around internet and uh, and so on. So I joined the point of um, the um, Mr. You here and uh, you here and also you talk. It and the use also told uh, told it. It's not uh, the fact to make a video or to present th uh, them. Um, this is important. You uh, you don't you don't realize it, but I can tell you that it's important in uh, by making video or um, articles or so on. But just we uh, it's um, sorry we maybe have here every one of us um, have to uh, do something like activ um, activity and let them know um, see by what we do that it is important like i have the idea to in um in france to create an annual uh, open forum and at the beginning probably it will not be um known like um, famous or they will not be uh, interested by it at the beginning but little by little and they will become to realize that uh, it exists and know about it and maybe with time, they will um, get involved. Of r like we want them, uh, we want uh, the youth to be involved. The way, yes, this way. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, well, that's a great, great point to end on. Um, so, a few administrative items. Um, I will send out what we discussed today to the mailing list. And for those who are not on the mailing list, please join. Uh, it's a Google group. Um, so you can also see it in the uh, document that we share, which is igf.asia slash ycigigf. Um, so uh, I'll send again, or come to me if you have questions. Uh, so please, uh, please join the mailing list, and then we will uh, convene from there. Um, just as a little wrap up, uh, today we have um, thought about the uh, roles and responsibilities for the interim committee, and then there's also the appointment of uh, interim committee. Somebody have already put up their hands, but again, we will let the uh, list decide. Uh, the timeline, mo most importantly, will end in 10th of January, in one month. So the nomination is for seven days, and then consensus is another three weeks um, to kind of work out who the five people would be. And David would definitely help on the timekeeping uh, as well. I think Michael would chip in as well. That was super helpful. Um, and there's a lot of energy that we ha heard just from like you know how to engage younger participants. Where you know I can kind of bring back to uh, Mag as a whole uh, IGF uh, organization. But there's also more things that we could do individually in our own countries or regions. Um, so again, I would like to congratulate all of you for a really interactive uh, session. It was really fun. Um, and I love seeing everyone uh, speaking up. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you, see you on the list uh, and continue with the intercessional work. Thank you.